Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Beards and Bitcoins. We are your crypto podcast for the man's man and the ladies that love him. I am your co-host, Jay Chains. Joined with me, as always, is my in real life friend. We're not just digital money friends. No. We are in life, real friends, bit boy. Coming from the studio again, man. That's right. Today, I don't know, dude. Things just feel a little, little shady today. A little shady, kind of cool. A little shady, kind of cool. I mean, where's I got my Yosemite Sam hat around here somewhere. Okay. Listen, guys, we, we got a big show for you guys. And I'm going to be serious with you. I, I can't take myself seriously when I wear sunglasses inside. I but can. Jay, he's the kind of guy that can wear sunglasses inside and get away with it. I like to think so. Yeah, you look I don't like to wear my sunglasses at night, but I certainly don't mind wearing them inside. I wear my sunglasses at night. I don't know the rest of the song. It's like, so I can see. I'm not sure. I don't know the lyrics. But all I do know is uh, we're going to talk about an issue today that is not sketchy, okay? That is Bitcoin, the most reliable cryptocurrency in the whole space, okay? Well, it's old faithful. It's, it's old faithful. Well, reliable, it's, it could be questionable. Well, it's consistently slow, if not. <laughs> then reliable. It's reliably slow. It is reliably slow. You can always count on it to let you go or let you down. Oof. Oof. That's not good. So, so yeah, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and how much Bitcoin should you own. We're going to actually put literal numbers on it, mm -hmm. tell you how much you should own. And we're also going to talk about how much of your portfolio should be Bitcoin. And I'm going to reveal the shocking number of Bitcoin that I hold. I'm going to tell, tell you guys exactly how much Bitcoin I hold. Jay, please do not give this away. <laughs> you are spoiling the episode right Spoiler now. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Well, so, I'm sorry. I'm I'm blind, so that's why I'm wearing the sunglasses. He's just a poor blind man. Someone please no, tip pl him. Please, if you are uh, vision unenabled, I apologize. It was a bad joke. I think that would be disabled, not unenabled. Potato, potato. That's a, that's a, a lot of uh, extra letters in the beginning. Okay. All right, guys. Listen, we're going to talk Bitcoin today. We're going to tell you how much you should own. I'm going to tell you how much I own. I, I don't know how much Jay owns. Maybe he'll tell you. Maybe he won't. He's feeling shady at the moment. Let's wax it. All right, Jay. Let's talk Bitcoin. Let, let's chop it up. BTC. B. TC, the granddaddy of them all, the cryptocurrency that started cryptocurrency. That's that. That I don't think you could debate. I think that's factual evidence. I think it is. Well, let's talk about this. Let's break down first. Let's talk about your. Let's talk about how much Bitcoin should a person own. So we're going to talk about how much Bitcoin a person should own. We're going to talk about how you should balance it in your portfolio, and then we're going to talk about how much Bitcoin I own. And I don't know. Are you going to tell them how much you own? We'll see how the episode goes. We'll see how it goes. We don't want we don't want the media outside. We don't we, we don't want robbers going to your house tonight. We don't want that. We do not want that. So what what's your opinion? How much Bitcoin should a person own? So the uh, I believe the correct answer should be is that you should never own much. Uh, you should never own more than you can afford to lose of any particular investment. So that obviously will be a very big sliding scale depending on your economic makeup. You know. Uh, like the guys in some third world countries that get on the airdrops and all that stuff, 10, 10 bucks in Bitcoin to them is big. 10 bucks in Bitcoin to me is not big. No. Uh, I, I am a firm believer of being a full coiner. Uh, there are only 21 million of them. Uh, if tomorrow every millionaire in the world decided to get themselves a Bitcoin, they could not. So I am a firm believer of. Well, do you, how much Bitcoin is in the circulating supply right now? Do you know? Like 18 million, right? Um, I think it, it's, uh, yeah, 18.46 million. Okay. Okay. Do you know how many millionaires there are in the United States? Like 1,000 or 2,000 or something like that, right? No, 18 million. What? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm pretty sure. How many millionaires are in the U.S.? Let's see. It's a crazy number. 18.6 million. Jeez Louise. That's, that, now, that's 40%. Of the millionaires in the world. So that means in the world, there's about, I don't know, maybe 45 million, 46 million millionaires. Can you believe 18.6 million? That means that one out of every 20 people in the United States is a millionaire. 
I'm getting my come up soon. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I would never even thought that there was. I wouldn't either. It's huge. It's it's as many millionaires do not feel rich on this article here, but you know, part of that is you know if you own your own house. You know, and you live in California, house is a million dollars, you're considered a millionaire. That's true. That This doesn't mean you have liquid cash. But if there's 18.5 million approximately circulating supply of Bitcoin, 18.5 million, and there's 18.6 million. It's not, not everybody can have one, even if you're right. a millionaire. Yeah. And, and so uh, so my answer is I'm a firm believer that if you're <clears throat> if you are in this to win this, if this is part of your game, you're never going to make it if you have less than one full Bitcoin. At yeah. least that's, you know, that's an opinion. Now, again, there's sliding scales and everybody sees things differently. And, and obviously, depending on where you live, you know, money's worth a little bit, you know, differently. I get that. But I think you should be part of the club and have a fully. A fully? A fully. A fully. Now, I, I think that's a good way of thinking. Okay, one Bitcoin, have one Bitcoin. That's a good strategy. Maybe one day it'll be, you know, uh, worth a million dollars, whatever it might be. I think the number that you are going to want is going to be somewhere in between. I recently did a video on my channel about this. I think the number you're actually going to want is going to be somewhere between 3.3 and 10 BTC. That should be the number you should strive for. So explain to me the 3.3, because that kind of seems like a strange number to uh, enter into something that might change your life. Yeah. So that's based on, I believe, in the next bull run, we are going to see the price of Bitcoin somewhere in between... One hundred thousand and three hundred thousand dollars. So if the price is one hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, then if you got ten BTC, you're a millionaire. Yep. If the price goes up to three hundred thousand dollars, as the stock to flow chart indicates, that means you need three point three BTC or three point three three BTC to basically be a millionaire. Okay, so clocking it at twelve grand a piece. What is your advice for someone to get that three point three? Because obviously not everybody can just go out and dump forty grand to get. Of course, thing. of course, it takes people a long time to get that. Uh, it, but when you look at Ethereum, Ethereum is going to be the best way, in my opinion, for you to get a discount on BTC. So what I mean by that is, in the last bull run, Ethereum climbed to 0. 0.1 BTC. So it was a tenth of a, a bit. Yes, and Ethereum was equal to one tenth. Now it went as low as below three tenths or uh three one hundredths okay. excuse me uh like one thirty third of the bitcoin price during the low right now it's coming in at uh 0.035 btc okay so that means it's 35 percent of what it was at its peak okay so what that means is if ethereum eventually climbs to as high as the as it was previously so if it can get up to one uh, to 10% of the Bitcoin price, that means that if Bitcoin was at $10,000, Ethereum would be at 1000 or if mm-hmm. Bitcoin was at 100000 Ethereum would be at 10000 okay? That means you only need 35% as much Ethereum as you would need Bitcoin, okay? So if you, if you have, uh, let's say you have 10 Bitcoin mm-hmm. and the price goes to $100,000, you're a millionaire, well, that means if Ethereum can catch up to its peak that it was before, that means you would only need 3.5 BTCs worth of Ethereum Ooh, okay. to get to a million dollars. To, to catch that same yes. scale. Yeah. So you, Ethereum is the best chance. Now, look, people can say, well, Chainlink's a better call. You can do the strategy of trading up alts using small cap coins. When they peak, sell them. The whole game is how much Bitcoin and how much ETH can you own. It used to be only how much Bitcoin do you own. But now Ethereum is such a major player in my mind that it's really like you can judge how much you own in ETH or BTC. And I think Ethereum is your best way to get to the amount of Bitcoin that you need if you want to switch it over to Bitcoin. If not, then just be happy with your ETH gains. But you only need 35% um, of that. So, uh, you know, if you were to say, okay, well, let's say Bitcoin goes to $300,000, which to me, if Ethereum is going to catch up and get back to that 10% mark, Bitcoin's going to have to be on that higher side, I believe, mm-hmm. to keep the bull run going long enough to get it there. Now you're saying, okay, for basically one Bitcoin worth of Ethereum, one Bitcoin worth of Ethereum, you could become a millionaire in the next bull run. Wow. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be great. 
Yeah, be great for these people. That'd be great for. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, as far as holdings go, uh, I, you know, I do, and that's another thing we want to talk about is diversification. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as you know, do you don't want to? I, I don't believe in Bitcoin maximalism. I think that that's <laughs> so so toxic. It's Hate toxic it. to those people. It's toxic to the ecosystem, to the community, everything. Um, I own very little Ethereum right now. Really. I feel like it after this conversation, it might be time to change that. Yeah. Well, I, let's talk about let's talk about how much Bitcoin I own. I know. Let's I, do this, guys. How much Bitcoin does BitBoy own? Okay. Are you guys ready for this? Here's the number. I'm gonna give you guys a number. Literally zero. What now? Let me ask you. Is it because you don't believe in Bitcoin? Because it's too slow? Uh, because it's not transactionable. It's more of a store of value. Or is it because you've gone into alts or you've cashed out? Well, uh, let's let's answer another question before before Ooh. we get there. Answer a question with a question. Answer a question with a question. The question is, how much of my wealth is in cryptocurrency? Oh. What number do you think? What percentage of my wealth do you think is in cryptocurrency? Five to ten percent. Ninety percent. Hmm. 90% of my wealth is in cryptocurrency. Okay. Uh, that means that if somebody came and stole my private keys, I would be just about broke. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'd still be okay with my 10%, but I, I would be just about broke. Okay. Now, here's the thing. If 90% of my wealth is in cryptocurrency and I own 0% Bitcoin, what does that mean? It means you're an altcoin maximalist. I'm a monster, baby. I'm an altcoin monster. Give them to me. I'm like the cookie monster with the altcoins. Where's the Ethereum? Where's the Chainlink? Where's that Uniswap coin? Where's Unilayer? Where's Unitrade? Whew, scoop them up. Mm. That's what I like. He's scooping, man. He's I shopping. like. Look, man. I. And here's the reason. I, Bitcoin's boring as crap. I'm sorry. It's slow. It's slow. It's expensive. It's boring. I hate the Bitcoin community. Like I can't really express to you how much I hate the Bitcoin community. They're lame. They're they're really, they're the blockbuster of cryptocurrency communities. Oof. Yeah, we need a Netflix. We need a Netflix. Or the Redbox. Remember that? When yeah. Redbox put Blockbuster out of business? Absolutely. Because here's the thing. Blockbuster just felt like, I'm so, so big. Nobody can ever mess with me. We've talked about it on the show before. Safest job in America in 1995 was Blockbuster Manager, baby. Oh, man, you had the life. The life. By the horns. You had it. You were good, man. You had all those little employees working for you with the with the beige pants. Mm. Okay. It, you know, I worked at Blockbuster myself. I was working for you. Now you're working for me, son. Mm. You know what's funny? Uh, and I, I actually have zero idea as to how this business is still in business. But uh, I was visiting my mother uh, up in Chicago a few weeks back. And by her house is a family video. Oh, my gosh. Why in the world is anyone renting videos? One word. Nostalgia. Do you even have a DVD player? A, on my PlayStation 4. Nerd. <laughs> Whatever, my kids play it, dude. I play sports games. That's not nerdy. Uh, yeah. You know what's funny? I saw a thing the other day. Someone was, uh, it was on Twitter, like a, a Madden thing. And I said to myself, you know, I, I don't game. I'm, I don't have the patience for it. I can't sit down to just sit there and play video games. I would play Madden right now. Yeah, I mean, that's my son's name. I named my son Madden. That's how much I love the game. Okay, now I don't sit around and play it very much anymore. We play, I play it with my kid. We do little franchise modes and stuff oh, like that. Fun. He loves it. He has a good time with it. Um, I think I think it's good. I like sports games. I'm not a nerd. You ain't gonna catch me playing freaking Minecraft or Roblox or Fort Fortnite or. How do you know all these names? I got kids. Oh, good point. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll allow it. Th thank you, thank you, Alex. Uh, but but to, moving this conversation back around, I, Bitcoin maximalism is toxic. That's why I make fun of them all the, all the time. I call them maxi pads. It soak up the toxicity. Yeah, okay? absolutely. And I, I think that it, these people that are just like, they're living in the past. Like I've, Bitcoin is not going to be the only cryptocurrency. I've, Ethereum is dominating everything right now. So for me, like, do I own any Bitcoin right now? I, I say 0%. I, you guys know I do a lot of, you know, I do sponsored work on my channel. A lot of those people pay in Bitcoin. And so I, at any given moment, I might have some Bitcoin coming in and out of my portfolio. You know, I may have some Bitcoin. Uh, you know, I, I actually do have some Bitcoin right now sitting on Binance probably. I think I got probably maybe two Bitcoins, something like that over there. Maybe got a Bitcoin on another exchange. But that's just because I ain't got time to go and exchange it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or I'm waiting for a better position to get myself in. Okay. Because to me, Bitcoin is not, 
if you have hundreds of thousands of dollars and you want a safe investment and you want to throw money in Bitcoin and let it sit for a couple years, hey, I'll listen to that strategy. If you're a new person in crypto and you got $600 to allocate to cryptocurrency, I'm going to be real with you. You ain't going to get rich with Bitcoin. Mm -mm. You ain't. You ain't. You're, you're not going to. Hey, how about, how about this? Uh, at the time of this recording, Bitcoin dominance has dropped to 58%. I want that number at 30. Uh, I mean, that when that's flipped. Yes. That's, you know. It was at 70 for a while. It was. The lowest I've ever seen it. 33, uh, I think. Yeah, 32.8, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was what? in That was in January of 2018? Uh, sa Sunday, January 14th, 2018. Hey, I know my cryptos. <laughs> There's a reason why we do this podcast, okay? We've been in this game for a while. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, when we first started, we had been casually in crypto for a while. But look, now We're we are. I'm knee deep in crypto. Yeah. I'm actually, neck that's deep. a lie. Neck deep. Eyeball deep. Ooh. I'm just, eyeballs. Okay. So, th you know, th there used to be this strategy. I'm, I'm really kind of getting away from some of the advice that I give people on my channel because, you know, a lot of the advice that I give people is based on what's safe for them and yada, yada, yada. Oh, well, you're going to definitely want to have Bitcoin in your portfolio. You need about 40 to 50% Bitcoin in your portfolio. F that. No Bitcoin. Screw it. All right, so... Screw what... it, Jay. <laughs> okay. What is a, uh, what's a safe number, or at least in your opinion, how many uh, alts or how many coins should you balance in your portfolio? Easy. 8 to 10. Yeah, that's a good number. 8 to 10. If you, Because, you know, I know people that, like... It's funny, man. Like everybody thinks because I'm a crypto influencer and blah 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 that I got every single coin that I talk about and I buy all these coins. Guys, I, how much money do you think I have? Do you guys think I'm worth twenty million dollars? I'm not. Okay, I I can't put a decent chunk in every crypto, and I'm not putting a hundred dollars in a cryptocurrency because that's pointless. Pointless. Now, now look. Some of you guys are in different financial places, and I don't want to come off as somebody that's like blah blah blah. blah okay. What the the way I want to come off to you is if you've only got a hundred dollars in cryptocurrency, you got to treat that hundred dollars like it's the most valuable thing you ever had, yep. and you got to work on flipping that up through altcoins and making big swing find, trades. Find those low cap gems. Find those low them. cap gems. I understand some of you guys don't have a lot of money to put in. Okay, I understand that, and I don't want to come off like I'm belittling you because you only have a hundred dollars in crypto. That that's a start. You're already ahead of 99% of people out there. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's true. But but for those of you that have been in the game for a while, and and, and you got seven dollars uh, in 35 different cryptocurrencies, that's not going to cut it. It's not going to change your life. No, it's not. The way you change your life is by making smart financial decisions, keeping your portfolio balanced, having some small ultra speculative ones in there, having some more reliable coins in there, your Ethereum, I think everybody needs to have Ethereum in their portfolio, Chainlink, Tezos, Litecoin, believe it or not, I think it's still going to have a good run in. So you got all these different projects that are, you know, going to be good for that balancing your portfolio, but don't get too far out there. Now look, here's the strategy. Yep. If you want to have a portfolio of 8 to 10 and you say, this is my crypto portfolio, but then you also want to have your gambling fund. Oh, that's smart. You want to have a gambling fund, and you say, this is just my, I'm willing to throw away. I'm going to throw this in small, small, low caps, like right when they launch, hodl it for a while, maybe trade it, maybe flip it, do whatever. Then try to keep that separate from your regular portfolio. Oh, absolutely. I, I think the best way to do that, and this is the strategy that I've employed, is that I put my portfolio, like what I consider to be the stuff that I'm probably going to retire on, in cold storage. And I don't touch Boom. it. And I'll throw a Bitcoin onto Binance and I'll play with that, you know, and I'll, I'll flip some alts and I'll do some things, but I am never going to touch my cold storage. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think, I definitely think that that is, that's the way to do it. Uh, I, and, and it's weird because like, okay, when you look at your portfolio in one sense, like, okay, all the money that you have is all the money that you have. So really you can kind of look at it like it's all part of your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what I'm saying is I got my HODL portfolio that's different mm -hmm. than my flipping portfolio. I like to stay liquid. I don't even really stake stuff. We were talking, you yep. know, earlier this morning uh, off air about it. I don't even really like to stake stuff because I can make more money flipping and trading mm -hmm. than I can make staking. just staking it. I yeah. mean, staking, I'm going to get, you know, even some projects I can get up to 30% in a year, 
Well, I can take that liquid money, and I can get way more than 30% in a year. Well, you could flip that for at least a dubski. You know? Oh, at least, dude. At least. At least you I can two And if you're X's. staking, you're never going to catch a 10 xer Well, right. I mean, you would, but... You... Well, if the, pri- if the coin itself 10 xs because you got to take that in consideration, too. Like, I, I do stake some on Crypto.com, so I have some CRO staked, and, like... I've been make the the amount I've been making through the staking isn't that much, but I've been forced to hodl that because I hardly hodl anything. I'm always flipping, mm-hmm. so because of that, like my value's gone up significantly on CRO. So um, there, there's some pluses and minuses to it. But guys, the the best thing is just to remember, keep your portfolios diversified, not too diversified. Okay, and in my opinion, I think you should be more heavy on alts than you are on BTC, unless you've got a lot of money and you just want to set it and forget it. In that case. Have have your day with Bitcoin. Do your thing. Do your thing. But I agree with that. I think having a bunch mm-hmm. of alts, that gives you a better opportunity to generate uh, some wealth that could be life-changing. Yeah. And that's what we're in here. We're here to change your lives. Well, I know recording in the studio has definitely changed the podcast and changed our lives. We've had a really good time. I hope I hope that you guys like it. Uh, drop some comments. Let us know. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think about the new format. We've been running for several weeks now. Uh, really excited. We might be getting ready to go to our second session of recording now. I can't so wait. pumped. Can't wait. I love being out here in Austin, Texas. But that is all we got for today. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. And until next time, grow your beards and your portfolios. We out. <laughs>